this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! Let's continue on through to the end of the Solio Springs. So actually, we pretty much are at the end, but, well, that's just where I ended up stopping. I've, since last time, I've invested into some of the secondary job classes, and I've listed a new setup in the video description. My, ex my equipment is the same, but my, um... My accessories are different, or not my accessories, my uh, paradigms are different. And uh, if you don't haven't invested in them, don't worry about it. Like for Lightning, I'm, I've invested in Saboteur. If you don't have that for her, make her into a Ravager for that paradigm. For Vanille, I've invested a bit into Commando. If you haven't gotten that for her, you know, make her into a Ravager. And for Fang, uh, if you haven't developed her into Ravager at all, then make her a commando for that paradigm. So it's really flexible. It's just something that would be nice. You know, it's nice to have triple saboteur because they boost each other's uh, success rate for the debuffs. So not to mention you get more opportunities to inflict those debuffs, obviously. So that's also pretty nice. We get through there and we'll be in Ava. You're almost home. Yep. Is this the fallen tower of Pisa? They straightened that tower up, didn't they? Doesn't exactly look like it's gonna be a leisurely stroll. Like the le it used to be the leaning tower of Pisa, but now it's not leaning anymore. Oh, right? A foul sea. I don't know. I don't live in Italy. Oh. So we just head through this foul sea's lair to get to Erebo, right? Well, yeah, we saw him on the way in. Point, huh? Yeah, we've only killed one, two if you count uh, Bartandalus, although we didn't really kill him. Boy, he chews up those Amphis Banas for breakfast, huh? Well, okay, let's go check this place out. I Couldn't we like just walk around. around the tower, though? Uh, just a thought. But, well, we'll take what we can get. Here's another mission. Awesome. Tajin's Tower, huh? Or Tajin, or whatever. I'll probably change my pronunciation depending on how I feel at the moment. But we got another mission that we can do that's on the way, so why not? Now for this battle, let's use Triple Saboteur. Yeah, I love having Saboteur available for Lightning there. Still gonna stick with the uh, Charlie's Angels team. I'm not using this party because I'm using three ladies and I like looking at all their asses. I just, I'm just using it just because it's a, very, it's a good party for this area. So all you really care about with this guy is getting deep attacks on him. If you can get more, so much the better. But once you do that, then just switch to uh, Comrav Rev. And uh, don't try, I wouldn't recommend trying to use like Triple Ravager to chain him because you'll kill him before you can ever stagger him. So don't worry about it. Hodley Fang? Well, there we go, easy enough, just like all the other guys, except it's a good idea to use a, a debuff on them there. Where are those birds anyway? Oh, there they are. I was wondering where they were around here. Get back here. Sit! Heal! Yeah, one thing I really like about this party, like I was saying, the triple saboteur, you can get triple ravager and triple commando. My, some of my favorite job classes for offensive output. And now we're so strong, we don't even have to worry about feeding stoop or, or anything like that. Basically, what I recommend is once you've learned all the abilities for someone on their main job classes, even before finishing out all the stack gains, just, you know, start investing in the secondary job classes. Just a little bit, not too much. Like, get the protect the shell for lightning, and, you know, that should be good. Oh, and hey, here's the uh, Lollipop Guild again, with their new green friends. For boss time! Okay, so, uh, yeah, we fought all these guys before, but... Well, it's quick enough, so I figured, why not show them? Let's kill all the uh, little guys first there. There we go. And I guess because I have, uh, well, because it's Fang, and she's just that kind of lady, she uh, wants to use uh, attack instead of ruin against these guys, even though they're, uh, they have protection from physical attacks, I guess. Something like that. There we go. Uh -oh. Well, now they got Shell on them. So, yeah, it would be a good idea to be using physical attack. Launch him into the air. Launch a little critter. There we go. These guys are wailing on us, and they're not even... Da they're hardly damaging us. I would probably rather go against 
uh, take out the Munchkin first, because he's got less HP than the other guy. I wouldn't even bother with uh, Sentinel. We've got so much HP now that we really don't need to worry about it, unlike when we first met up with these guys. Not to mention, uh, the other guy has uh, uh, that elemental weakness there. Aw, oh, nuts, I lost my game. Oh. Whoa! Uh, okay, switch to diversity. How did I lose so much HP so quickly? And here I was thinking that they, these guys couldn't really hurt me at all. Oh well. Switch to uh, Triple Ravager. Now that we got Fang as a Ravager. Fang works actually pretty good as a Ravager. I wouldn't invest in the... Um, I wouldn't invest in the Elemental Strike abilities. For at least not for right now. But soon enough. Here, soon enough. Keep him in the air. There we go. But yeah, I mean, Fang as a Ravager works almost as good as Snow as a Ravager here because uh, there's some enemies, there's more enemies here that are weak to fire and thunder, which Snow cannot take advantage of, but I still want to be able to have a saboteur available. So Fang, even though she doesn't have all those roll levels, she can somewhat compensate it, compensate for it by the fact that she can hit more elemental weaknesses than Snow. I mean, Snow's still a little better, but, uh, you know, I like having fa I like having Fang to have that flexibility because she can also be a saboteur which Snow he doesn't have access to the saboteur spells that I actually care about there so I, I like using Fang for that not to mention having a leader that can use certain debuffs can be pretty useful too one of the reasons why I use Fang is a saboteur long term oh uh yeah, we want to be triple saboteur for that. By the way, there is one thing that I was thinking about uh, for the accessories for the next boss. Let me know if you have any specific preferences. Usually, I like using warrior's wristbands and sorcerer's marks exclusively because obviously auto-buffing accessories will wear off too quickly. And really, I'm not that worried about the target time for bosses besides the missions, obviously. But I mean, like, the big boss for this area. You, you know what I mean, viewers. So, if you got a better idea, let me know. I mean, using pure stat boosting accessories seems kind of uncreative, but I really can't think of anything better for the boss of Tajin's Tower. Yeah, this is my favorite area in the game. It's got kind of a creepy vibe to it with the music, and, uh, well, you'll see when we get through here. But the dungeons, or the areas, they start really getting good from this point in the game on. I'm not the only one hearing that, am I? No. No, uh, no, they're just jacking with you. It, it couldn't be them, could it? No, no, they're just stoned. I don't know. I'm trying it's to remember weird. where I've heard something like, like that before. Head. Maybe an episode of I Star Trek? It. Your presence here draws the tyrant's gaze. Leave this place at once. Leave we can't this leave. place. This you is are the only way for us danger. to get through. Please, help us. Shouldn't Vanille be able to understand what they're saying? I mean, it's like Fang has to interpret for everyone. As you wish. Or maybe she's just doing it for everyone else. Look for us, and the way will open. The way to the moon? No. No, just the way through this tower. Yeah, this is a really cool thing about this tower. The floors rotate around like that for uh, the elevator. Or lift! Lift! Sorry, it's Australia. Hmm. That yeah, was they, easy, they, they call them lifts. You never know. Could be a trap. Could be. But yeah, they, they've got like Don't little no puzzles fans, here. Though. Nothing Do obscenely you? difficult, but you know, you gotta rotate the right? floors around so that way you can get Can't up to the next not. floor, solve the puzzle, go up to the next floor, and so on. So it's pretty cool. I like that. Why could the rest of the game couldn't have been like this? I don't know. I mean, maybe not exactly like this, but you know, have some amount of interaction to make you think a little bit more about the dungeon instead of just walking from point A to point B, you know? That would have been really cool, but here, well, at least they give us something. That was 4721 Gil. How did they come up with that exact number? That, that would be my question to you, viewers. The other thing that I really like about this area is that we also get a little more background on Pulse, too. I mean, nothing that's essential to the plot, but, you know, just learning about more about who lives here and everything like that and all these creatures and everything. And we'll learn more about, uh, well, whatever those guys are. I don't know. 
I forget what they're called. We'll learn eventually. Okay, well that's all the treasure we can get on this floor, so let's get in that weird looking elevator. Apparently they're into uh, wheels in this place or something, I don't know. Oh, I've never seen an elevator like that. Well, let's go up to the second floor, why not? A little lazy there, Fang. How does this thing work? Sounds like a music box. Are you sure it's taken this long to get up to the second floor? I mean, it's kind of right there. Well, then again, it is a pretty big tower. Despite there being a big hole in the ceiling. There is a big hole there, right? Can I look that high, or will the game not let me? Uh, no, no, it's not letting me look that high. Just trust me, there's a hole in the middle, because, well, you saw the rest of the tower knocked over. Uh-oh, he spotted us. He looks pretty happy. I'm trying to remember where I've seen something like that before. Nuts. What happened? Looks like somebody's got a temper. Well, at least we can get through here now. Sounds like a good idea. Ah, there we go. They're, uh, Manirum. I'm guessing the H is silent there, but, uh, yeah, that's what these stone guys are. They're the Manirum. So, well, okay, let's, uh, yeah, we have to do some missions in order to progress with the tower. Uh, let's see. First things first, though, switch to, uh, Triple Ravager. There we go. And these guys are pretty much like all the other ones that we fought earlier in the game. You stagger them, and they're not much of a problem after that. There we go. Switch to Comrade Rav. And then we should be fine. Oh, come on. Get up, Fang. Stop sitting on your ass like lightning. Why are my leaders always sitting on their ass? Everyone else has to do all the work. Hmm, maybe I didn't need Triple Ravager. They're immune to uh, everything I care about. So, yeah, don't worry about um, trying to debuff them or anything like that, like their other cousins. Yeah, we'll just do whatever we can here. There we go. One thing that's interesting about Fang's last attack, because she hits the enemy so many times, is that she has some uh, commando ability that when you hit an enemy, it charges your ATB gauge slightly, like uh, Lightning's uh, Axis Blade. So. Great, we get the mission from his penis. That's great. But yeah, so Fang actually is a little faster than Lightning if you can debuff an enemy in a way. So, well, that's kind of interesting, but well, I still like both of them for their particular per points in the game. But anyway, we got to kill one of these guys, and there's three of these Manirums around here that have missions for us to unlock the rest of the tower. Next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day! Eh, someone requested seeing me recording this for whatever reason. I don't know. It's not really 129. That's just what my PS3 says. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know what time it actually is. But, there you go. I suppose I should reset my clock one of these days, huh?